says this meeting is being recorded and um, you can go ahead and begin. Thank you, Jennifer. And uh, Dr. Shabazz is also on his way in, but let's get started. I'm going to call to order the February 13th meeting of the African Heritage Reparation Assembly pursuant to chapter at sorry 2.04 p.m. Pursuant to chapter 20 of the acts of 2021, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so via Zoom or by telephone. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via Is telephone. Anybody talking? Means. And I, I am Dr. Shabazz. Can you can you... hear me, but I can't hear you. Mm. Where is my sound? It so I don't know. You can hear us. It says name only on next to your name. I don't know what that means. Uh, sometimes signing out and coming back in can help if that that helps. I do want to mention um, that this meeting is being recorded. So we'll do a sound check while Dr. Shabazz is figuring out his sound situation. And I'm going to start with you, Dr. Rhodes. I can hear and I definitely I think I can be seen. You can be seen and heard. Yes. <laughs> uh, Ms. Bridges. I can hear you. I'm still trying to figure out my screen. So. OK, it's you can be one seen. right now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I can't see everybody else, but I can see me and you. Oh, okay. Are you on your iPad? Yes. Okay. It's I know the iPad has weird functions. I yeah. Can't find it. Even I went through settings, but I'll figure it out. Okay. All right. Hi, Hala. Hello, hello. I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, very well. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you. <laughs> Um, and Pamela. I can hear you. Um, Excellent. Hear you too. <laughs> uh, and Jennifer. I can hear you. Make you do that. <laughs> you were already, I know we could hear you, but just in case. Um, okay. How about you, Dr. Shabazz? Any, any better? Hmm. hmm. Okay, um, so there's four of us, so do you want to try um, popping off and then popping back on, Dr. Shabazz? No, I'm, I'm good now. Oh, you're good. Yes, you are. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Wonderful. Okay. Welcome, everyone, um, and... Let's see here. I believe that Yvonne will not be available to meet today. And I think Alexis uh, may or may not join us. So, um, oh, you know what it is? I was looking, I'm looking at, I'm sorry. I'm looking at the um, agenda here for our upcoming retreat, which let me just see here. Uh, all agendas, just excuse me one second. Okay, wonderful. So I'd like to just start with a couple announcements. Um, first, I wanted to start by uh, just acknowledging a beautiful event that happened this past week um, that Ms. Bridges is involved in and would be happy to pass it over to you, Ms. Bridges, if you would like to say anything about it. Um, this was the opening of the Ancestral Bridges uh, exhibit at Amherst College. Um, so this exhibit had already been um, for the Juneteenth, sort of leading up to Juneteenth, and then through Juneteenth, it was at the Historical Society, and now it's been moved to Amherst College through the summer, I think. Um, so Ms. Uh, Ms. Bridges, would, do you want to say anything about it? Sure. Um, we had a, a great, great turnout. Um, my 96-year-old aunt spoke. I spoke. Um, and with the, the exhibit and the partnership with Amherst College is phenomenal. And myself, I think maybe at some point we should have Anika here to speak on it um, at our meeting because it, 
it was a, an amazing event and it's just gonna keep going on and on. I suggest people come and see it who didn't get a chance to see it. It's gonna be at the Robert Frost Library through the summer. And are there particular hours or is it basically open when the library is open? It's the open Frost. when the library is open. So Excellent. Um, okay. it, it, was, it was amazing turnout, um, very well received. Amber, um, Amherst, uh, Amherst Video, is that what it's called? Amherst, Amherst Media. Me, Amherst Media, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Amherst Media, I should know that. Um, taped the whole thing. So it was once they get it together and send my aunt her <laughs> her uh, copy of it. Cause she, but she was an amazing, she was amazing. She got up there and spoke. Um, I had to go after her and I said it was a hard act to follow, but um, <laughs> I, I think that it would be really great if we had Anika come and speak on it when we can do that. That would be wonderful. And um, we can extend the invite to to meet her, you know, scheduling whatever works for her. Um, I think it would be really great to have Anika here and to talk about the exhibit and just everything that sort of surrounds it. Um, it really was beautiful. And I suggest that folks um, get over there to see it if you haven't. I wonder, will the video be uh, of the opening, Ms. Bridges, be available for public viewing once they get it together? I, will it I'm be? pretty sure that would be, but um, the, the amazing, which talks about the, um, the partnership yeah. between Namers College and, and Ancestral Bridges is, it's is just phenomenal. It's very it 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 needs to be put out there. But it was like they they really did a great job putting it together and partnering, you know, with with ancestral bridges. So I'm pretty proud of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I felt that too. It was um, really really beautiful. Um, okay, well that's that's one announcement that I had, and then uh, let's see. Jennifer, could you tell us about, um, or, or Pamela and or Jennifer, the um, Black History Month, uh, what's coming up for that? I know we have some events that are coming up that the town is hosting. Um, and I can also pull, pull things up too, unless you have it right there. Oh, do you want to go ahead, Pamela? I Oh, I, th I thought that you would go ahead. So the first event was on February 1st, um, and Jennifer would have to describe that because that was, I wasn't able to attend that event because of Aaron's health issues. Hmm. And the um, uh, final event is happening on the 26th of the month, um, which is uh, the experience of Black music um, from we're trying to be very ambitious 1619 to present day uh, with examples of uh, song and history um, under the broader theme of resilience so beautiful and that will be at the middle school um, and that's co-hosted with the human rights commission is that right that's correct Okay, great. So that mm -hmm. is open to all um, and um, everyone is welcome. So are there any other announcements that members have before? I'm gonna um, move us immediately into a first public comment period. Um, and just, I have a, just a few words that I'll say with that, but would any other members like to all right. Well, we did have two amazing birthdays happening among this membership this week. <laughs> um, so I won't I won't name any names, but <laughs> um, I will say um, happy birthday to the two wonderful members um, that were celebrating this week. Herb so Rose, has yours happened yet? Uh, yeah, next year. <laughs> <laughs> we're Irv and I are both February, February people. I don't know if there are any other February. Uh, anyway, happy, yeah. happy birthday, Milka. Same to you, Irv. 
<laughs> Sweet. All right, so we're going to move into a public comment period, and um, we so given the sort of timing of our meetings, um, we have been basically able to meet about an hour um, each each meeting. So what I would ask is for folks, um, if you are an Amherst resident, please raise your hand first, um, and we will take that public comment first, and then. We'll uh, just look at the le the list. We do have several people in the audience today, um, and then we'll have a second public comment period later in the meeting after we've had discussion, and we'll go through that same process. So I'm going to read the public comment statement quickly. During the public comment period, chair will recognize members of the public. When called on, please identify yourself by stating your name, pronouns, and address. Residents are welcome to express their views for up to three minutes at the discretion of the chair based upon the number of people who wish to speak. No speaker can cede their time to another speaker. The AHRA will not engage in a dialogue or comment on a matter generally. Um, sometimes we are able to answer a question or clarify something. Um, but generally, we'll just be listening and, and listening closely. Um, so if you would like to make a public comment, and uh, let's start with Amherst residents first, um, if you could raise your hand. Okay, not seeing any. So anyone in the audience who would like to make a public comment, um, please use the raise hand function and we will bring you in. And again, there will be a second period if you'd prefer to comment toward the, the end of the meeting. Okay, wonderful. So we have, uh, it looks like MRCC. I'm not sure who's bringing folks over today, if it, Jennifer or Pamela. Welcome. Can you hear us? Yes. All right. Yes, I can. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, so I know, thank you for having me today and for having a meeting in regards towards reparations and the work that you guys in Amherst have been doing. My name is Saskia Van James. I am a Cambridge resident. I'll, before Cambridge, I'm a displaced Bostonian. I grew up in the South Shore. I have family in Central Massachusetts and Western Massachusetts, um, outside of Massachusetts, <laughs> everywhere. Um, I am a descendant of um, enslaved people from chattel slavery within the United States. And I have been working to support reparations for the past several years. My organization was founded in 2017, and we realized that um, pushing for social equity was not going to um, achieve uh, liberation for our people and address the severe economic disparities that exist. And today I have severe concerns in regards to the way we're approaching re repairing harms and acknowledging that there's land trauma um, that's um, connected with people who are descendants of chattel slavery here within the U.S. Um, and actually acknowledging that through reparations. Now I know on a city and uh, on a municipal and state level, like the trillions of dollars that's owed to us is not, you know, feasible. But I do think that there's really practical ways that we can support um, transitional justice on a, on a super local level. Um, so some of the recommendations I have um, for you guys, I just wanted to share, because I know you guys are already doing awesome work and I see the agenda for today. But um, one of them I wanted to say is that I think it's critical for the city of Amherst to take the necessary steps to support recognizing Black Americans by their federal legal name as American freedmen um, so that they can become a protected class um, and to dismantle, to directly um, take steps towards dismantling systemic racism. We must acknowledge that when we're identifying people by the um, color of their skin, we are upholding systemic racism. Um, there's a quote by, by Bernice King last year. She said, I do not want to be people of color. That love is not love is not the stripping of culture and heritage. That is not love. So we need to acknowledge that there is a tri there is tribal harm that has occurred, and that the needs of the people here on who are indigenous to Turtle Island, which is American freemen, we are indigenous here as well as on the continent of Africa. We were here before the colonizers. We became enslaved also by Native Americans. So we have mixed ancestry here. We have been over here for over four hundred years. We are indigenous here as well too. 
Um, and we deserve um, for to be acknowledged that and for the anti-Blackness attached to Indigenous to be removed, for Black Indigenous people here on Turtle Island exist. Um, and to acknowledge precedence has been set forth by federal law that defines American freemen as being Black American descendants of persons enslaved in the United States by decree of the Freedmen's Bureau of 1865. So essentially what we can be pushing for on a local level is just like we have Office of Immigrants and we have Office of Native American Affairs, we can also have an Office for American Freedmen Affairs. Um, I would also like for you guys to recognize that there's 12 harm areas that's been produced by the California Task Force and those 12 areas um, defined harm areas are enslavement, racial terror, political disenfranchisement, housing segregation, separate and unequal education, racism and environment and infrastructure, pathologizing of fa Black families, control over creative, cultural, and intellectual life, stolen labor and hindered opportunity, unjust legal system, mental and physical harm and neglect, and then the racial wealth gap. So I ask for the um, Amherst to match what is already being done in other states um, as far as identifying um, the, the 12 areas of harm. Also, I ask for you to center the voices of American freemen, otherwise known as Black Americans, throughout the entire engagement and consultation campaign as part of transitional justice and, and recognition of reparations as defined by international law and recognized by the United Nations, essentially going through a truth and reconciliation process and for that to be guided by the people who have directly experienced harm. For we know our communities. We have in-depth outreach to do. This is an intergenerational movement. Our children have to be involved. Our elders have to be involved. All voices matter, all genders, all ages, all sexualities. We are a tribe and we cannot afford to let anybody's voices go unheard in this moment. I wanna thank you for your time. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Really appreciate you being here. Okay. Um, are there any other hands right now for public comment? Any other folks who would like to make public comment? All right, I'm not seeing any. Uh, wonderful. So um, we are going to move into our agenda and we're gonna start with a survey. Um, we have some great news. Town Manager Bockelman has signed the contract with the Dunahue Institute, so we are ready to move um, into our work there and uh, really, really appreciate Pamela and Jennifer for your support um, with that as well. Um, so we have tentatively planned to have a kickoff of our survey work during a retreat on the 22nd in the evening. Um, this retreat will take place in the town room. So Jennifer has reserved the town room, which means that those of us who would like to be there in person for the retreat can do so, but it will be a hybrid meeting. Um, therefore, Dr. Rhodes and um, any members of the public who are, are not able to attend in person um, can attend door, uh, excuse me, can attend in that way um, virtually. Um, we will not be holding a public comment during our retreat. So it's a special meeting, um, which means we'll just be getting to work as an assembly, but the public is of course welcome to be there um, to listen to listen in on our work. So this will be sort of a, a combination of what Alexis had suggested at our last meeting where we discuss our values as individual members, as well as what values do we want to move forward with as we um, begin to write our report and recommendations for the town council. And it will really kick off our survey work. <clears throat> so one of the questions that I have, since it's going to be in the evening from six to eight, um, is would we like for that meeting um, to include anyone from the Donahue Institute or uh, perhaps is it best for us to have that meeting and then invite the Donahue um, to, to, to a, a meeting after that where we'll already have had sort of our discussion and, and be able to then present that to them so that they can move forward with their work um, and our shared work really. Does anyone have an, an opinion on that one way or another? 
I think we should maybe save our time with the Donahue Institute for when we've, you know, more in that in that analysis phase and and uh, giving us, you know, when that comes back then. I don't know for this opportunity at the retreat whether there there's much to to go over at that point. Agreed. Awesome. Okay. Anyone else? I tend to agree with that too. So um, that, but if others have, and and just to keep in mind that our contract, um, it identifies that we have like two to four sessions with them, depending on how we do it. So we want to be really strategic in terms of the times that we're actually meeting with them. So it will be great for us to meet in that retreat setting, and then we can be really prepared for our first meeting with them. I have gone ahead and sent the Dunahue Institute, sent Kerry um, the Rhode Island, the Providence Rhode Island survey. Um, I had captured that survey and the raw data um, from that survey earlier on. And so I went ahead and forwarded that to her. So she might be, um, she asked actually if, if that could be forwarded. Um, I think members of uh, the assembly would also really benefit from seeing that. So I will have Jennifer include that in our packet so that it will be available and I'll send it out to members. Are there any other questions right now in terms of the survey? Questions, comments, concerns? Um, the distribution list was quite comprehensive and I really like that. Uh, it gets to all the great groups that we should be getting to. Awesome, I'm so glad to hear that. I'm actually gonna share the screen right now um, so that we can look at that together. and. Uh, I would like to, I sent this out to the committee earlier today, um, but because of open meeting law, I, ha I had asked for folks not to work in the document. So if you would like to add to this distribution list, um, I can go ahead and do that in real time. Or now that I think this has been put into the public, you could certainly um, send any suggestions to Pamela or Jennifer or myself, and we will make sure to add. Um, but we'll just briefly go through this. So first here, we have the residents of African heritage. These are the ways that we have right now. Um, our inclusion portal, a BAM list, an R4A mailing list, and then our social media. Um, there may be other ways here. Um, so So please feel free to we can just popcorn style as we're going through this. Um, we've got elected officials here um, and town departments. I'd love for Pamela and Jennifer to give feedback on the town department list. If there are other departments that this makes sense um, to, you know, to make sure that distribution happens, that would be great. Um, town committees as well. If there, if Jennifer and Pamela have any thoughts on that, um, we have our. Uh, PACs, our political action committees. We have our economic development organizations. We've got the media. Here we have our anchor institutions, including student, staff, faculty, and alumni. Um, and then our family, community, and civic organizations. Um, I did add a couple today to this list. Uh, there's a new alliance called the Amherst Climate Justice Alliance. It's made up of a very, it's a very, very powerful alliance uh, of, of, of different organizations coming together around climate justice and also the intersectionality um, with the work that we're doing, as I understand it. Um, and then we have our grassroots groups. Uh, independent schools. This was one where I thought I might be missing something, but uh, what I don't see is the. Did you have the regular school district, particularly the family outreach center? I have the family outreach of Amherst, uh, but I you're mean talking... the one within the school district. Yeah. Yes. Okay. It's K to twelve. Okay, PTOs. But I think the I think there is an outreach unit of the school district or of the schools that may also have a list that can be shared beyond the PTOs. Excellent. Okay. That's great to know. I will definitely make sure. And Jennifer, you're shaking your head. Do you know something about that? Well, I believe the appropriate person might be Dwayne Chamble to send it to. Dwayne. So it's um, 
Because Marta Guevara moved moved up from there, didn't she? Was she? Oh, I'm not a hundred percent sure. She was still at the family center, I thought. But they have their own Amherst Family Center, and also I would say yeah. that um, Mike Morse's regular me. Uh, newsletter that goes out. So the superintendent has a weekly newsletter. All the principals of the schools have a weekly newsletter. I'll clean this up um, for us. I'm just getting it in there for now. Okay, great. If Talib would send the uh, survey link out with uh, Talib Sadiq as a long time, uh, you know, part of the Bias family as a part of a long time ancestral Bridges family, that would probably go a, a long way, particularly in stimulating some of the African uh, heritage community. Absolutely, and I had a chance to catch up with him briefly at the Ancestral Bridges exhibit, and um, we've been in communication. So that's a great, yeah, that's a great, that's a great one for us. Um, and then let's see, we also have the faith organizations. Um, I do need to flesh this out a bit to add um, all of the various places of worship. Um, we have the Interfaith Network and the JCA Reparations Committee. Dr. Shabazz, is the Interfaith Network the group that you're involved in with the folks from across the, the river there? Um, Bridge for Unity. That's, is that a, that's different, right? That's different from Interfaith Network, yeah. Okay. There's, there's a little email list that they can send out to, sure. Excellent, okay. And then I know of the District 1 Neighborhood Association. I'm not aware of other neighborhood associations, but I'll definitely check with my colleagues on the council to see if, if there are others that we could, um, but we can definitely ask um, counselors who represent districts to get it out. So I'll just say, you know, district counselors. Great. And so I would imagine that we will, once the survey questions are completed, we'll also um, have a, a memo or a, some sort of letter that goes with it. Um, I do want to speak with Jennifer and Pamela about translation. Um, I think I did say last time that our contract includes uh, the Dunny who will be creating a written version of the contract as well. So we'll be able to um, maybe we want to add to the list the physical places where we would like for um, physical distribution. Are there any thoughts on that? Well, uh, uh, could you go back, scroll back up? I just want to make sure that absolutely uh, the bid and the downtown Amherst Foundation are on there. We have yep the chamber and the bid and the downtown Amherst Foundation. And that's DAF, right? Right. And the Amherst Cinema Board of Directors, whoever that group is, there's a whole group there. That's a great, yes. Okay. Oops. Sorry, I'm not. All right. And they actually, because they just unionized, right? So we might list them under family, community, and civic organizations. Are they not here? No, they're not. The uh, union uh, and the uh, in terms of Amherst Center Cinema, I guess all four of them uh, unionized. Irv, what do you mean all four? All four of? There were very. There wasn't a large group. Uh, of employees of Amherst Cinema that unionized, but they unionized anyway, so. Oh, wow. Okay, I didn't realize that. Okay. And Jennifer, what is, you, I remember you had given me this one, Cran. What, I thought you had. Was that not you? <laughs> the C-R-A-N. I, I don't know where that came from. Okay, I'll look into that one. Um... All right. So I'm for reason, I'm sorry. Oh, please, no, go I'm ahead. Pretty, do you do you need what that acronym stands for or no? Oh, that would be great, Hala. <laughs> yeah. I'm pretty sure it's Citizens for Racial Amity now. Oh, that's that is what like, it is. Okay. Yeah, okay. Now I know. All right, I'll remember that. And then um, all right, let's do physical distribution spots. We had talked about 
um, definitely, Jennifer, what's your experience with other surveys in terms of, I know the is the town hall generally one place? So I would say that maybe have a QR code on a, a flyer. And mm -hmm. so the hotspots would be the banks, the Jones Library, like the restaurants. Um, Hopefully the bid also, like the bid chamber office. Yeah, you could do the bid in the chamber office. And ask. Oops. But I know like Crazy Noodles has a really large board where you can place stuff. Okay. So there is a space here in town hall. Great. I know, and I, I'll get a list of other restaurants that I know have posting boards. Like I know Amherst House of Pizza does, um, but we can add to that. Okay. Um, what about uh, maybe in some of the uh, faith buildings that we have, there might be an opportunity there. Um, so we'll we'll see about that too. All right. So this is our list um, for right now, and at this point, we can add to it at any time. Um, and I'm gonna send this over to Carrie as well, just so she can get an, a sense of where you know that that was one of the kind of questions that came up is where was this going to be? How were we going to distribute? So if there's nothing else, I'm going to stop the share here and we can move on. Oh, Ms. Bridges, how you doing? I see you're <laughs> covering your eye. How are you, are you feeling okay? <laughs> I'm doing okay. All right, good. <laughs> um, okay, so any other questions before we move on about the survey? Yeah, my brown hand is fading into my door, but oh, uh, excuse me. Yep, go ahead, Dr. Schwartz. Trying to confirm. Uh, so the the town doesn't have a any disaggregated list um, from its either from its voting rolls or from any other uh, any other sources. I don't think so. I remember asking. I don't believe that they ask about race on the local census. Yep. Um, so I don't know who else would necessarily have that. And then the aggregated list, which would be a list of ground addresses. I know candidates sometimes pull those lists to send out their postcards and whatnot. That's a, that's just of every um, resident in town. Do we know what that global number is just to have a kind of a ballpark against which against what we're doing by I guess electronic mail what is our ground list of of Amherst residents with ground locations oh I I don't know off the top of my head uh, um, okay so but I can find out and then e send everyone an email yeah yeah that that, that's great. the universal voting that would be just in terms of I guess either the tax list or the voting list what is the what's what's the universe of of amherst would be good to know i have um, i'll go transfer the form i have the voter list um from i think the most recent voter list for the town that i have that i um requested in my role as counselor was september 3rd 2021 but i believe i requested one even more recently that just i'm not seeing in my google drive right now Yep. So I can definitely, but like on this one, um, there are, oh goodness, how does this, it looks like there are about 16,000 entries, 16,089. Yeah. Would that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All, that's, all I have is from dated November 1, 2021, I have the district eight as it was then called i don't know if precinct eight i don't know if they still divide the the voting list that way anymore or not but i had pulled precinct eight and was able to identify one two three 
four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, well, a small number of entries that I've identified, um, my my own residents included, who are in precinct eight African African heritage people. But anyway, that was just part of an effort I was making from from that particular list. But okay, it'll it's just good to have what we know as sort of the universe of of residents um, to then be able to cross reference with whatever we get in at the end of this process in terms of those who self identify as Amherst African heritage residents, so that we can see vis a vis you know, this population count, here's how many we got in response. So we mm -hmm. have some some idea of that. That's all. Absolutely. Uh, one thing I, I don't, I'm not sure if it's on there uh, is the Amherst ending because of their um, distribution that they have. Yes, they are on. You mean on the list that we had up? Yeah, right. Yeah, they're on there under the media with all the rest of them. You said the Amherst Indy, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We're good with that. There's the recorder. Isn't that what it, or the reminder? You know, I don't know if the reminder, that's a, let me just see. Um, here we go. The reminder, that's a good call. Cause that's somewhat new. I have the Indy, the Amherst current, which I'm not sure if that's running anymore. The Gazette, Amherst media, Valley free radio, WHMP 106.3 and 97.3, the beat. Um, but the reminder is is also good here. Let me add that. Amherst yes. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. And okay. uh, have a reach that extend beyond our town, but but again, we can we can see what we have. Which one was that, Dr. Shabazz? Thing, well, you were just mentioning the reminder, and I was just in some of the others you listed, I think maybe are headquartered outside of the town and maybe have a reach that goes beyond the town, but maybe that's going to be okay because we do have in there different ways people can identify if they are Amherst residents, if they are of the of the uh, the tar our, our target population. So it's, yeah. we'll hopefully have some some universe, some number of that identified as such. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, you know, we may capture folks who have moved out of the Amherst community for whatever reasons. And that's really important, I think, um, to be able to do that. So, and that might be something we want to talk more about at our retreat, um, because my guess is folks who have moved out regardless of the reasons that they've moved out, would be able to um, provide us some really, really good feedback. Um, so I do see, did, oh, there's Hala. Okay, wonderful. I thought I saw Hala had fallen off. Hi, Hala. <laughs> can you hear us, Hala? I can, I apologize for that. No worries, no worries. Okay. All right, great. So moving on. Um, again, is everyone here able to attend the retreat on February 22nd from six to eight? Again, it will be held in the town room for AHRA members who would like to be in person. And it will also be available just as uh, we would have a, a, a usual meeting via Zoom. Um, so I do see someone's hand is raised in the attendees and just wanted to let you know in case you weren't here earlier. We did have our first public comment period, but we'll be holding another public comment period shortly. So um, it, please do leave your hand up if you'd like to speak during that. All right. So the other pieces that I wanted to get to today, I wanted to give you an update on the big payback screening. So I've been working with um, the Student Senate at Amherst College, um, and uh, they are very, very excited about hosting the big payback um, and having it be um, in one of the spaces at Amherst College. 
Um, we're hoping for that to occur in late March, but more likely early April. Um, so, and that's so that Alderwoman, former Alderwoman Robin Rue Simmons is going to uh, make a trip here to Amherst and will be part of our panel that we'll that we can um, have either before or after the screening. So once I have some more information, um, the Senate has identified three possible locations at Amherst College that would work for a large crowd, as well as um, space to have a sort of reception and panel discussion. So as that moves forward, I will, I will keep folks posted, but please let me know if you have any questions about that. Um, and if you haven't seen the big payback, I think I, I think I said it's it's um, streaming free on PBS right now. So definitely excellent um, and and worth watching. And then, in terms of the League of Women Voters event with Dr. Sandy Darity. Um, we, a small group of us, so I think it's Dr. Rhodes and myself, are meeting with a small group of the league later this week, and that is a first meeting to discuss how that collaboration might work um, and how the AHRA may um, be able to, to support and collaborate on bringing Dr. Darity here and, and what, that, what that will look like. Um, so I'll also provide more on that. Um, and the Stolen Beam is putting out another series uh, in which they've um, invited us to be co-sponsors um, of. And so I will make sure it's, I'll make sure that all of the dates and things like that get to you all. And then um, there's a press release actually that hasn't gone out yet, but that will go out soon. Um, so that's really exciting. That's again, also in partnership with the library, <clears throat> the Jones Library. Um, any questions on all of those pieces? Any of the, any of those? I wanna thank you uh, uh, for your uh, all your work on this, uh, Michelle, and to furthermore, just to suggest that um, perhaps coming from you on behalf of all of us, if there's agreement, would be to make a special invite to attend the, the payback, the big payback to um, the presidents, at least of our colleges and our university here in town. So Chancellor Swami Subasami, um, Chancellor Kumla Subaswamy, uh, Edward uh, Wingenbach at uh, Hampshire College, and uh, Michael uh, Elliott, at uh, at Amherst College, it would really be important if those three uh, gentlemen would uh, would attend. Excellent. Yes, I, I agree. I've noted that, and I know that the Senate President, the Student Senate President at the college, um, Cyrus, is in close contact with Michael Elliott, and so um, we'll be able to move those things forward as we um, as we sort of put the pieces in place here. And I think it would be really great to think about that for all of the membership. Who do we want to, I mean, we want as many folks, right? Like our work is for the entire community and we want as many folks from all different aspects of the community um, to attend um, who would like to be there in attendance. And so just thinking about our list that we already have and how all these pieces are going to come together. Like, is there a way to have an invitation to the big payback also tied in with an invitation to the survey? So just thinking about how we can be um, efficient and effective in our work uh, as we, because we really are limited on our time at this point. Uh, okay. So I, uh, Dr. Shabazz, I'm not sure if you have, or if Hala has, um, a BAM update. Um, I did want to say that I received an email over the weekend. Let me just see if I can pull it up real quick here. Um, and I will share my screen. Uh, let's see. And I'm curious if anybody has seen this. 
uh, let's see, share screen. So somebody sent me this um, legislation that was filed in January um, by Senator Liz Miranda. Um, and this is to create, it's not scrolling here. Oh, here we go. This is to create an, this is an act establishing a commission to study reparations in Massachusetts. Um, I was surprised I didn't see any news or anything about it. So I'm not, but it, it did get filed. Um, so I'll send that to everybody so that you all have it. But does anyone know about this? Um, yeah, so uh, it's been in preparation and um, I think there, uh, uh, I've spoken with Bud Williams in relation to his uh, being listed or, you know, uh, you know, supporting similar, a uh, similar measure in the general court in the, um, in the lower chamber. But, um, but yes, this is, um, uh, uh, efforts within the, within this, uh, the state level that, uh, I think our, one of our, our, our speaker in public comment, who's based in Boston, um, uh, Ms. Van James, Saskia Van James, uh, mentioned is, has been going on there. The, um, uh, there are, our efforts to uh, to really look at this. Some of this even has been discussed um, from the some of the cannabis commission, um, you know, relative to some of its efforts or kind of lack of efforts around the the justice uh, uh, reparative justice aspect in regards to to cannabis uh, policy and cannabis reform. So yes, this is. Um, this is a major development, I think, stimulated in part from um, California kind of getting ahead of us and being the first the first out. Now, here comes Massachusetts. Yeah, absolutely. And, um, you know, I just as a from sort of wearing my counselor hat was um, planning to send an email to uh, Liz Miranda and just uh you know, thank her for filing it and, and sort of make a connection with her. Um, so yeah, it'd be interesting um, to follow that for sure. Um, so was there a BAM update, um, Hala or Dr. Shabazz, that you'd like to share at this point? Um, there is, um, from my standpoint, there is not, we have been on a bit of a hiatus and um, need to get back into meeting regularly. So um Thank you for the encouragement or reminder and accountability. <laughs> awesome. Uh, um, welcome, Alexis. Oh, th thank you so much. I'm sorry. I'm like scarfing down food, but thank you. <laughs> Good. All right. I'm glad you're here. Um, so, and, and Alexis, I'll catch you up on what you missed in terms of, um, the retreat and, and just various announcements. I'll catch you up, um, outside of the meeting. Awesome. Okay. So I'm looking at our agenda. Um, if there aren't any other member reports, or even if there are, let's do, let's call our second public comment period. Um, and again, I'm going to ask first that folks um, who would like to make public comment that our Amherst residents, please raise your hand. Um, and then, or, or, you know, if you, if you are affiliated with um, the university or any, um, any sort of stakeholder in Amherst, please raise your hand first. Okay. So uh, we have um two hands up right now and i'll just ask that jennifer pull our first speaker in yep lauren mills should be coming in so i'm letting her in first great and while we're doing that i wanted to uh make sure that in our member comments section of the meeting that dr rhodes um if he is willing will give an update on the cssjc meeting that we were invited to attend on friday i sent you all the meeting recording um it was a really really rich meeting um on on many many levels and recommend that everybody watch it if you get a chance um, but Dr. Rhodes will be able to give a, a little bit of an update, I hope, on that 
Um, and let's see, I think we have Lauren. Hi, hi Lauren. Hi, how are you? I'm going to try to quickly as I can and hope you can hear me. Yes, just stay close. You were sort of fading in and out. So, but I, I think we can hear you. Okay. Um, yes, I am a resident of Amherst, but I grew up in Boston. And I just had a few comments um, about, you know, my research and, you know, just staying in, in conversation and in, in the know-how of, you know, this um, assembly. I uh, have been looking at um, the Caribbean Reparations Commission, which has a website that has some interesting points that it, it makes. And um, one of them uh, is the importance of cultural institutions and heritage inst institutions, and also um, the enhancement of um, historical knowledge for um, Black people um, in, in this country um, to further our knowledge of ourselves and to help us to um, continue our, our narrative of what reparations um, means and looks like. I also wanted to um, comment on, um, you know, the Caribbean, it has reggae month this month as February. So they, they see their culture and they infuse their culture in um, their schools and in their children and their youth. And I, I would encourage this assembly to find a way to get youth involved in um, the reparations discussion. And also want to say happy birthday to Bob Marley and his family, which um, his birthday was February 6th, 6th and also happy birthday to um, Dr. Shabazz and Dr. Rhodes. Um, I think that's all I want to say and just, um, it's really important for black residents in Amherst to stay um, abreast and to continue to uh, be part of the narrative of the reparations assembly. Thank you. Thank you, Lauren. And I am going to just take a moment to respond because I want Lauren and I want everybody to know um, that tonight, Amherst, uh, the Amherst Recreation Committee is meeting um, and they have on their agenda youth empowerment. Um, so I'm sure maybe Lauren is already aware of that, but I'm going to try to attend. Um, I have another meeting to attend, but I'm going to try to listen in to that. Um, and that might be of interest to others as well. Um, the other thing that I wanted to say is, um, and this is very early, a seed has been planted, um, and and Lauren, I'd love to talk with you more about this, um, but the possibility of the AHRA um, as one of our ways of reaching the community, having an intergenerational dance, um, and um, this is something that an, a community member has brought to me and uh, I think is is a really neat idea. So I'm meeting with them on Wednesday for lunch to hear more about that idea. Um, so thank you, Lauren. Watch out if you get Deborah Bridges on the dance floor. <laughs> it's gonna be hot. <laughs> <laughs> and Carly Tartikoff for that matter. <laughs> <laughs> That's who we want. <laughs> um, all right. Wonderful. So um, thank you again, Lauren. And we have uh, Kiara is coming in. Welcome, Kiara. Can you hear us? There I am. Okay. I can there you hear you. <laughs> Good afternoon. Um, I just wanted to, first of all, say um, thank you for um Holding these public comment periods is definitely a very essential part of the process and hearing from, from the public on these, this issue. Um, I do want to um, just continue to beat the drum that any sort of data collection that you all are doing um, in terms of gathering information from the, from the public, it must have some level of data disaggregation in terms of ethnicity when you're doing your outreach within Amherst. Um, it's very important to actually, to actually identify 
uh, the population who is who are descendants of of, of slavery in in Amherst and in, sorry in Amherst and just in, in general is very important, um, especially when we're talking about genocide and actually being able to to name and recognize um, our people whose history is the basis uh, for this reparations claim to begin with. So that's that's incredibly important. Um, also, um, with regard to the uh, media um, apparatuses that you're that you're going to look into to share the message. Um, I know this WEIB is on there. That is my family's radio station. So I'll be happy to help to facilitate that connection if need be. Um, also, I wanted to recommend um, African American Point of View magazine, I'm sorry, newspaper as well. Their reach definitely extends to Amherst and will definitely reach people in Amherst as well as those who may have moved out of Amherst um, into other areas of the Pioneer Valley. So definitely I want to recommend them as well. Um, so I think that's all I wanted to say, but just continue, continuing to, to put the message out there and beating the drum that um, the, the actual specificity of uh, Black Americans descendants of U.S. chattel and slave is a very, very important part of this process. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much, Kiara. And I understand that um, Kiara and Dr. Shabazz participated in a program together recently. Is that something that we can watch? Like, is that available for viewing or is it, has it been recorded? It is an audio recording. I'm working on the technical aspect of that, getting it um, produced, but yes, that's available. Probably go on to YouTube with it, Kiara, is that right? That's right. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Well, please let us know when that's available so we can check it out. <laughs> All right. Um, so I am not seeing any other hands. Um, Dr. Rhodes, can I call on you um, to give us some um, a, a bit of reporting on the Community Safety and Social Justice Committee meeting um, that occurred? I do see Alexis's hand is up in the attendees. I'm not sure if Perhaps she got moved out um, accidentally. I'm just going to say that the name says people talk, move. And so she was next to <laughs> Kiara. And so their names were moving, although Alexis wasn't speaking. And so I think I. Yeah. Accidentally... Okay. I forgive you, Jennifer. I forgive you. <laughs> <laughs> um, Dr. Rhodes, we do have one more hand in public comment. Let me ask you, do, can you wait through that public comment before giving your report or do you need to run? No, I can. I definitely have a little time. Okay, great. So let's take Cash, who is um, coming in on uh, through public comment. And so that public comment period is still open. Welcome. Can you hear us? Peace, peace. Yes. Great. Uh, thank you for letting me speak. Uh, first, I wanted to say um, reparations is very important. It's the conversation of modern day. So I applaud y'all for having this discussion and uh, the things that come from it. Um, Michelle, I was hoping that you could bring the uh, image back up of the bill for uh, Massachusetts. I think it said 2393. And I tried to screenshot it quickly, but I'd like to research that further. Uh, just to understand these bills, who suggested to be a part of the commissions uh, in San Francisco, which is what I wanted to bring up to this uh, uh, group and to those who, in the sound of my voice. In the city of San Francisco, they have a reparations task force of which is completely black American based on uh, different socioeconomic statuses from a 14 to 24 year old to someone formerly incarcerated to someone who's been displaced by uh, uh, gentrification, someone affected by, uh, excuse me, someone who lives in public housing. Uh, uh, someone who's been educated in finance equity, so on and so forth. I think we should take a look at that same uh, uh, standard for when creating any of these task force in the respective cities and states. Uh, as well, I wanted to just amplify the financial demands that San Francisco suggested and, and uh, hope that we uh, mirror those in these respective cities and states as well. Uh, in San Francisco's instance, and it's from a 60 page report on page 33, where they speak about economic uh, empowerment they mentioned a lump sum payment for reparations, of which they set it at $5 million, a one-time lump sum, as well as 250 years of income payments tied to the area median income, of which some of us argue that should be for 400 years. As well, there's debt forgiveness. I can mention the other things, trust fund, uh, um, um, as well as tax credits and other things, but I really wanted to focus on the debt forgiveness because I see that as a win-win strategy that ties together public and private partnership uh, um, in a way that uh, I think will expedite our claim. Just uh, as one example, the, uh, any credit card company 
uh, any uh, um, any university that Black Americans specifically would owe debts to, those debts would be eradicated or paid for by the American government. So I think that it would be in their best interest to see this claim come to fruition. Uh, thank you guys for letting me speak and uh, peace and reparations. Thank you, Cash. And yeah, I'm just, um, so I want to just give you my email address quickly. Um, if you send me an email, I can send you the bill. Um, it's Michelle with one L M I C H E L E Miller M I L L E R three six eight O at gmail.com. Um, so if you have the time and you just send me a quick, a quick email, I can send that over to you. And the bill was Senate docket number two, three, nine, three. It was filed on January 20th, 2023 presented by Liz Miranda. Um, so if you do a Google search of that, you'll also be able to find it, but please do reach out by email if you'd like. Um, so thank you for being here, Cash. And um, so we're going to have Dr. Rhodes and I see that we have, I think we have one of our co-chairs here from the Community Safety and Social Justice Committee. And if they would like, and this is, I'm putting them on the spot, Allegra, um, if you'd like to come in, raise your hand, um, you keep your camera off if, if you're not in a place. And if, if you, if you want to stay in the audience, that's totally fine too. But I want to welcome you if you'd like to come in. All right. So um, we'll bring Allegra in and then um, Dr. Rhodes, why don't you go ahead and share with us about the meeting? It was a, it actually was a very good discussion and interaction um, with that committee. Uh, first up is that uh, the uh, topic of Crest came up in its objectives its mission and um, looking at where they are now and how close they are to their mission and objectives. And um, that, uh, one of the things I uh, uh, indicated uh, was that, you know, it would be good for uh, the uh, committee, CSSJ, uh, and uh, at, at the end of the six month period in which Crest has been alive to, uh, look at how close they are to their mission and to view that through the lens of the data that would have been, that will be collected and would have been collected. Uh, they indicated that they would be having some kind of forum or listening session in March that would address that. I think it would be a very, very good thing uh, to happen. Uh, Crest is a very important part of this town at this point in time and uh, their mission as a uh, uh, voted upon and stated uh, needs to be examined in terms of whether they're on mission or whether there are other things that have thrown them off track uh, or whatever. So that's one. Uh, the other thing was, uh, um, I think Pat mentioned something about uh, Black businesses here in, in Amherst. And uh, my response was that uh, when uh, the uh, bid in the downtown Amherst Foundation in the town uh, were uh, distributing money, a lot of the businesses that were on the list that uh, Pat had were uh, either in Hadley, uh, did not exist or went out of business or were bankrupt or that, uh, uh, they were not registered with the town, nor were they registered with the state. Uh, and finally, they were not, uh, they did not apply. Uh, one of the things that I, uh, that I uh, the observations that I shared was that when I looked at that list, uh, it uh, occurred to me that um, there was a woeful lack of entrepreneurship skills that have been exhibited. And that is one thing that can be rectified. And I certainly at some point in the very near future would like to bring that forward to AHRA, how AHRA uh, and uh, the CSSJ uh, and the town and the big can come together uh, to create an entrepreneurship uh, program uh, for not only adults, but also 
for middle school and high schoolers. Now, that entrepreneurship program for middle school and high school schoolers is something that's very dear to my heart. I've taught entrepreneurship uh, from uh, third grade through adults. Uh, and I also, uh, one of the experiences I had was teaching an, uh, entrepreneurship uh, to various students, groups, uh, uh, about a year after Katrina hit and spent three months there uh, teaching entre entrepreneurship and financial literacy. Uh, that is something I think uh, is very dear to my heart. I think that it would be very important uh, to have that available in, in Amherst. And I think uh, that can certainly occur, occur if we uh, coordinate uh, with each other. And the last thing was that, it, you know, uh, the CSSJ has uh, some uh, um, priorities uh, and that uh, the town has signed off, for, off on and, uh, and that those things need to be uh, moved forward. Uh, and I think that there may be a role for AHRA. I also believe that, and I said that it would, when you're dealing with the large list of priorities that you pick three of them to move forward within a period of time, uh, gather all the resources necessary to get those done and get those done and then move on for another set of three. Anyway, that's about it. Thanks, Dr. Rhodes. That's really helpful. And I ran into Ms. Pat over the weekend, and she was really looking forward to talking to you about the idea that the two of you sort of hatched during the meeting and, and the technical and entrepreneurial uh, work. So, um, and I, I want to thank again, Allegra Clark and Dee Shabazz, Dr. Dee Shabazz, for inviting us to the meeting um, and for wanting and, and encouraging us to be in collaboration. I think we have a lot of intersecting um, mission. So I would love if Allegra, if you if you could especially tell us about the upcoming listening session, but please um, to share anything that you might want. And I did send out the recording to all of the members here. So for folks who want to listen, it was a really, really powerful and um, really, really great meeting. Welcome, Allegra. Well, thank you. It's nice to see all of you. And again, thank you for all the work that you have been doing in this community. It's really important. Um, and I, I do hope that we can continue to collaborate. Um, I think that the listening session will be March 25th. Um, I believe the plan is to have it from two to four in the afternoon. Um, and I believe that we decided upon the town room um, so that we could have a hybrid function for people who might not be able to join in person. Um, and Chris will be present to kind of give an overview of how the past six months have gone um, and also to hear from the community about what the needs are um, from the community's perspective. So that is, I think the plan so far, and we'd love to have as many of you there as possible. Excellent. Yes. And um, please let us know if we can support that. Um, I'll definitely make sure that I get that out to folks, um, time, date, and everything. Um, and Jen Jennifer, I assume ha it hasn't been posted yet as a meeting. Is that it's not posted yet? So there's no link or anything. Yeah. No. Okay. And I, I'm going to create a flyer this week. Awesome. So. Perfect. Okay. So thank you, Allegra. And um, if so, I see it's 312. I know Ms. Bridges pushed past her <laughs> time. And I think some I think of the rest of us did. did. No, you're good. <laughs> okay. Um, are there any other member comments before we adjourn the meeting today? And just to be clear, um, we are set to meet again on um, I'm sorry, the 20th, we can't meet. That's right, right, Jennifer? We are closed on the 20th. Okay. So our retreat is on the 22nd, which means um, that some of the preparation for that may have to happen 
uh, between me and Pamela and Jennifer in advance and anything we need, we'll reach out to you all and um, ask that you only send it to myself or Jennifer and, and, or, and Jennifer and Pamela. Um, and if you have any questions or comments, just give me a call, send me an email um, and we'll go from there. Uh, yes, Ms. Bridges. Um, before we adjourn, I just want to reiterate about the Ancestral Wizards exhibit. I think it's um, to learn about the partnership with Ancestral and Amherst College. And it's an amazing thing for the ancestral Black ancestors and indigenous in Amherst. Mm -hmm. And you'll learn a lot. So just wanted to say that again. Yes, and that is um, happening right now through the summer at Amherst College um, at the library, um, and it really is fantastic. For those of you, I think like Alexis was not here when we spoke about it earlier, um, we would like, and um, Ms. Bridges and I will work uh, with Anika, hopefully, to get her to come to a meeting so that we can um, talk about the exhibit and all of the sort of pieces around that. So thank you. It really truly is beautiful. If you have not seen it, um, definitely uh, check it out. And um, and when the, oh, Alexis, actually, maybe we could ask Alexis. Um, the Amherst Media production from the opening, Alexis, do you know when that might be available? I wonder if uh, she walked away. All right. Well, we'll we'll figure that piece out, and and we can find that out, and um, just head over to the Robert Frost Library, and it's you'll learn a lot there. All right. Thank you, Ms. Bridges. And are there any other comments? I think Dr. Shabazz might have he jumped off. Um, and so if, if there's no other comments, then we will adjourn at 3.16 p.m. Thank you, everyone. Really great meeting.